Okay, so in a couple of classes yesterday, but not all three, we covered number one. So I want to go over it again just in case not everybody saw it. The first example tells you that M is the midpoint of AC. If it didn't tell you that or mark it in any way in the picture, you would not know that. You can never just assume it's the midpoint or that this is equal to this just because it looks like it and M looks like it's in the middle. It has to either say it in words or mark it somehow. So since M is the midpoint and it says it in words right there, we can go ahead and mark those two sections equal to each other because that's what a midpoint is. It's right in the middle. So that allows us to make two statements. Statement number one is repeating what it told us. M is the midpoint of a C. Do yourself a favor and abbreviate appropriately wherever you can. So save yourself some writing. The reason for that, so that's statement number one. Reason number one is because they told us. That's how we knew. And you say because they told us like this. You write the word given because it sounds a little better than because they told us. So M is the midpoint of AC. And the reason for that is because it was given. It said it right here. Now there's a second statement you can make. Once M is the midpoint of AC, that forces this to be congruent to this. So you can now say AM is congruent to CM. Why is that true? It's because we know that a midpoint divides a segment into congruent parts, into two congruent parts if you want to be specific. So that's the reason. You always have to make a statement and then back it up with some evidence. And if it's written, you get to say given. That's easy. If it's not and you have to find it in the picture, you have to come up with some definition like that, which honestly is found in the other packet, but I'm going to walk you through a whole bunch of them here. Okay, don't worry about that yet. I just want you to look at the phrase up here. GH bisects DE. So that's saying that GH, the one I outlined in red, bisects this one, DE. And if you're bisected, that means you are cut in half. It doesn't mean that this is equal to this. It's saying that the bisector, which is this, comes shooting through DE right in the middle so that that's congruent to that. So we have two statements we can make. The one that already told us, GH bisects DE. You can abbreviate bisects BIS all the time. How do we know that? I read it right there. It's given. The second thing I know is this is equal to this. So I can say, just like I did before, a bisector is very similar to a midpoint, except a bisector is a full segment, um, and it's not just a point, but it still divides something in half. So I can say DF, this portion, is congruent to EF, this portion. And that's because, just like we wrote up here, except it's a bisector. A bisector divides a segment into two congruent parts. So it's explaining yourself. Why did you write this? Tell me why over here. Not a whole lot different when you're talking about angles. This is saying that ray DC, which is this ray right here, bisects the bigger angle BDA. So if that angle is bisected, that means it's cut in half, which means instead of this being one big angle, it is now cut exactly in half, meaning it created two equal angles. So it's the same idea as midpoint and bisector, but when you talk about an angle, it's called an angle bisector. So the first statement we can say is exactly what it told us already. We repeat this. DC bisects angle BDA. How did I know that? Because I read it. It was given. The second thing I can say is that this angle right here and this angle right here are equal. What angles are they? This one here is called B, D, C. And that's congruent to this one, which is A, D, C. Why is that true? Because an angle bisector divides an angle into 
two congruent angles. Almost the same wording as above, except instead of segments, we say angles. Okay, number four, there's a key word that's different in number four than it was in number two. This one says that AB and CD bisect each other. So it's not just that this one bisects, this one does too. So they do the same thing to each other which means if this comes through AB in the middle, then that's true. And if this one comes through CD in the middle, then that's true. So we actually know a lot just because of the word each other. The first thing they told us is our given. AB, I'll just put a comma, and CD bisect each other. And they said at point E. How did I know that? Because I read it. It was given. But what does that tell me? I know two more things. I know second sentence and I know a third sentence I can say. The first thing is that AE is congruent to BE. AE is congruent to B E because a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. Okay? And the exact same thing for the other side. Meaning D E and C E are also congruent. for the exact same reason, because they bisected each other. So a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. So because of the word each other, we actually knew two different things. All right, we're going to hold off on this one. Keep your notes through number four for tomorrow, and make sure you bring your Chromebooks tomorrow charged and ready to go, because I am going to do more on page two and beyond.